Uh, every year, some of us on the SSLP staff take some time to do site visits during the summer and go to where students are in action. It's great to see them interacting with site partners and the folks in the community and the alumni clubs. This year, I visited Orange County and Los Angeles, and one of the sites where I visited was a new site in Los Angeles, the Cathedral of Our Lady of the Holy Angels, right downtown um, in the midst of LA. And it was a new site for us, and it was with the Outreach Center. So the student who worked there, uh, Jerry Zhao, was working with the staff there in doing outreach. So people would come to the cathedral and ask for food and clothing and help with utilities, or help with rent. But what was unique about them is that they didn't just interview them and give money, they would make home visits. So I went along with Jerry and made a home visit uh, to a mother who lived in a one-room apartment with the restroom down the hall, and they had a checklist of things to see. What else did she need? The home visit was to be more comprehensive in the response of what someone um, who comes to them for help needs, and I was very impressed. But also in talking with Jerry, um, I found out that he took initiative not only to work at the cathedral, but take advantage of other opportunities, like going to meet Father Greg Boyle at Homeboy Industries and learn a bit more about that before um, Father Boyle visits on campus. And then he found another way to be of service um, during his time in Los Angeles. And I'd like him to tell you that story. So our first speaker this evening is Jerry Zowell. Please welcome him to the podium. Good evening, everybody. Um, first off, all the students here, uh, we all got about 10 reminders about this dinner, which meant that it was really important. And in every single email, as Ben has stated, uh, we were told how good the food would be. And I don't think we've been disappointed, so thank you for that. <clears throat> uh, I'm currently a sophomore living in Stanford Hall, go Griffins, uh, majoring in psychology with a supplementary major in pre-health. Uh, one of the things that you first learn in Intro to Psychology is that all of us have stereotypes. Um, it's impossible for us to understand everything about the world we live in, but at the same time, it makes us uncomfortable not to know. Or to be forced to ask someone for answers. So what happens when we don't understand culture, be it ours or someone else's? Our beliefs about culture develop from what we know about them what we've experienced, what we've seen, and most importantly, what we've heard. Prior to this summer, when I thought of the words poor and homeless, the image of a Chinese person did not come to mind. This was simply the opinion that I developed from living my life. I grew up in a predominantly Chinese community about two hours east of Los Angeles. Almost everyone that I interacted with was either an immigrant or a first-generation American. Living comfortably and with one of the best school districts in the nation, I easily considered my community to be in the upper middle class. This is the image that I had of a Chinese person for most of my life. I'd never seen a news story run saying that Asian Americans were being marginalized, and radio stations were constantly speaking about how Asian Americans are, quote, one of the most academically successful minorities in America today. So it was natural for me to want to accept this flattering view of culture, of my culture, as true. The hardworking and successful minority that proves the American dream is still alive today. At the very least, I couldn't find a counterexample to that. Well, I found it at La Placita, a historic Catholic church down the street from the cathedral where I work this summer. One of my responsibilities during the week was to drop off loads of bread from local food banks and supermarkets at La Placita. On one visit, I met the church's community outreach supervisor, Guillermo. And as we talked, he mentioned that once a week on Fridays, they ran a food pantry where people from the local community who were in need could come by to pick up a large bag of groceries. He went on to say that some of their clients only spoke Mandarin and that they were in need of an assistant. Sensing an opportunity, I sought the approval of my supervisor and offered my services to help in the pantry, as well as to serve as a translator. I really wasn't sure what to expect. Um, Chinatown being so close to the cathedral, um, I assumed that there would just be a few clients who were 
poor young immigrants uh, looking for some help while they try to get on their feet. When I arrived Friday morning, however, I was stunned by the number of Chinese clients that I saw. They comprised over half the crowd, and the youngest one I saw that day was at least 50 years old. I was immediately put to work as a translator in the mandatory health class that takes place before clients can receive their groceries. Reading a medical pamphlet out loud is completely different than holding a casual conversation. Um, I translated to the best of my ability in rather broken Mandarin, and needless to say, there was a lot of laughing. Um, afterwards, I was distributing numbers to redeem groceries with. Uh, I was able to speak with clients in a more one-on-one -on -one setting. I realized early on that I was totally out of my depth. Uh, most of the clients spoke only Cantonese or a rough blend of Mandarin and one of a hundred rural dialects. Uh, growing up, my dad used to call this farm speech, the way that uneducated people spoke. In Chinese culture, it is customary and even mandatory for younger generations to take care of their parents in their old age. Um, which I will probably end up doing. Uh, from what I could understand, most of the clients were uneducated immigrants brought to America, some even decades ago, by their children with the promise of a better life. When the children couldn't succeed, they either left California to find opportunities elsewhere or returned home to work, abandoning their parents in a country that wasn't even their own. Left without a support system or even family to rely on, these individuals fell into perpetual poverty Stories such as these are not limited to the Asian American community. Los Angeles is one of the most culturally diverse areas of the nation, and, though my, and through my service with the cathedral, whether it was by distributing groceries or performing home visits, or just stopping to talk with someone on Skid Row, all of these people were living in desperate situations. If there's one thing I've learned this summer, it's that poverty has no cultural barriers which is why it's so important to look past our preconceived notions of others. By doing so, we realize that wherever we go, there will be people in need, in, in need whom we are in the position to help, and that is our responsibility to do so. This experience has left a mark on me because of how personal it felt. Witnessing people I'm used to being around suffering. What better way to put a face to a social issue than by observing people from one's own culture in poverty. This is how we make a difference, by making it personal, by making it hard for us to walk away from a situation where someone is in need because we can empathize with that person. My dream is to become an orthopedic surgeon, and although Notre Dame is like a second home to me, there is nowhere else I would rather practice than in sunny Los Angeles. This is one of the main reasons I wanted to work at the Cathedral of Our Lady of the Angels. A personal thank you to the Andrews and McMeals families for making this experience possible. Your continued support of this program provides an invaluable service to me and my fellow Andrews scholars as we look to further understand the communities to, that we serve. Thank you.